When you think of some of the world's most dramatic buildings, they most likely involve large expanses of glass. Before these masterpieces can be created, the glass may need to be heat treated for durability and safety reasons. The type of processing required, either heat strengthening or tempering, depends on the glass's specific application. To help you understand the differences between these two processes, today we're going to cover the definitions of heat strengthened and tempered glass, how glass is heat treated, the differences in break patterns between the two, and why distortion occurs. We'll start with the similarities between the two. Both heat strengthened and tempered glasses are produced using the same processing equipment. The other similarity is that the glass is heated to approximately 1200 degrees Fahrenheit, then force cooled to create surface and edge compression in the glass. Now we'll move on to what distinguishes the two. With tempered glass, the cooling process is accelerated to create higher surface and edge compression in the glass. It is the air quench temperature, volume, and other variables that creates a surface compression of at least 10,000 pounds per square inch. This is the process that makes glass up to four to five times stronger than annealed or untreated glass. As a result, tempered glass is safer and less likely to experience a thermal break. With heat strengthened glass, the cooling process is slower, which means the compression strength is lower. As a result, heat strengthened glass is approximately twice as strong as annealed. The industry standard specific for heat treated or tempered glass is ASTM C1048. For heat strengthened glass, the requirement is a surface compression of 3,500 to 7,500 pounds per square inch or PSI with no requirement for edge compression. For tempered glass, the requirement is a minimum surface compression of 10,000 PSI and an edge compression of at least 9,700 PSI. To further understand the differences between tempered and heat strengthened glass and learn why Vitro recommends tempered glass only where it is required by code or certain environmental conditions, watch our video on heat strengthened and tempered glass on the Vitro Glass Education Center. If glass needs to be tempered or heat strengthened, it moves to the tempering line directly after the washer. Some glass fabricators have added online electronic scanning equipment, like the equipment shown here, to inspect every light of heat-treated glass for flatness quality. Surface compression measurements are taken to ensure the heat-strengthened glass meets industry specifications such as ASTM C1048, the standard specification for heat-treated flat glass. Another critical difference between heat-strengthened and tempered glass is their post-breakage characteristics. Safety glazings are typically specified to provide security or to keep occupants safe whenever there is a potential for broken glass to hurt people if it becomes a projectile, as in a fire, explosion, tornado, or hurricane. With heat-strengthened glass, pieces of broken glass remain relatively large and tend to stay anchored into the glazing system until they are removed. Although heat-strengthened glass is not a safety glazing by building code, this breakage pattern prevents the glass from falling and injuring someone. On the other hand, tempered glass is designed to shatter into countless, small, roughly cube-like pieces. It is this break pattern that qualifies tempered glass as a safety glazing material. However, because of this break pattern, tempered glass is much more likely to fall from the glazing system when it breaks. Therefore, it is essential for design professionals to consider this when selecting a safety glass. If it's important for the glass to stay anchored in the glazing system, you should consider another form of safety glass, such as laminated glass. Next, we'll discuss the concept of distortion. Optical image distortion occurs in glass for many reasons, including glazing pressure, wind load, temperature, barometric pressure changes, and changes in altitude between where an IG is made and where it is installed. Because of its fluidity at high temperatures, glass is also susceptible to roller wave, bow, and warp while it is being heat treated. Glass distortion can also occur due to strain patterns in heat treated glass or interference fringe patterns in the fabrication of insulating glass units. That's why at Vitro Architectural Glass, we recommend doing full-scale mock-ups under job site conditions to evaluate the optical aesthetics of a specific heat treating process. 
In addition, here are some other steps we suggest you follow in order to minimize the potential impact of glass distortion. Produce all heat-treated glass for a given project on the same equipment, using the same processing parameters, and use thicker glass since it is less prone to distortion. Orient heat-treated glass so that the roller wave is parallel to the windowsill or header. While there is no industry standard to quantify permissible heat-treated glass roller wave, a tolerance of five thousandths of an inch is often specified. Vitro recommends using a milli-diopter specification if it is available instead. Safety is a prime consideration when determining the type of heat treating process necessary for a project. Deciding whether to use heat-strengthened or tempered glass depends on the specific application. For example, heat-strengthened glass should be selected for applications that don't specifically require a safety glass product and tempered glass should be used where safety glass is required. Today, we covered the definition of heat strengthened and tempered glass, how glass is heat treated, the differences in breakage patterns between the two, and how that impacts safety and why distortion occurs. For more information about heat treating or any other glass question, visit vitroglazings.com or call 855-887-6457.